Yeah, you can't take anything away from Blooded Clouds. They do seem to be quite a good team here at this event. Obviously taking down SK already, but are they good as good as Pain? I'm not sure that they are, actually. Yeah, that's the question. Pain, number one team in Spain, beat the big rivals yesterday. Like I said earlier on, that's going to give them the world of confidence. Having said that, though, like you say, Billy Cloud beat SK yesterday. They should have some confidence as well. They definitely played like they belong in this game. They didn't play as if you know they didn't expect to be in the semi-final of, of DreamHack. Because at the end of the day, this is the winner's bracket semi-final. The winner of this match is going to progress into the winner's bracket final and then play, in, well, if they win that, then go on to the grand final later on this evening. Yes, they will. And you know what? It's going to be interesting to see Payne play SK later in this tournament if it gets that far, if either of them go in the loser's bracket or SK manage to battle their way through their own loser's bracket. I want to see how these two teams stack up. I mean, was Blooded Clouds you know, beating SK a fluke? We're not going to know until we see SK play another team, and we're not going to know until we see Prof play a good team just how good that these are. I mean, D'Amigo is supposed to be the third best, but we don't know. I want to see the Payne or Existence go against... Uh, prophecy or someone like apex and just see how they actually do well i said it earlier on well i said it yesterday rather i can see it being a prophecy pain final and at the minute that looks like the way it's going to shape up to be i mean pain if they win this which they look like they may well do they're going to progress into the winner's bracket final and then they can essentially lose that and it wouldn't surprise me if they played sk so i am anticipating that the prophecy will win the winner's bracket final and then it will be an sk pain loser's bracket final and i think pain may take it yeah, Payne may in fact take it at the moment. I mean, you know, we're going to see some incredible S and D here. Payne are very, very good at S and D, so I do think they're going to take this. And you know, what? I'm going to be interested to see the next capture the flag more than this. To be honest, I want to see that capture the flag was so close that it could be anybody's game. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get on board with the attacking team first, which happens to be Blooded Clouds, and on board with Boris. And he's to that bomb making his way on the right hand side, although I believe, yep, we have changed team. It always happens. Always pick the wrong team first, and everyone rumble with Boris. He has the bomb in this way top internet cafe, and he has just seen the left and a sandbag. Not entirely sure if he saw it too, though, but he is going to make his way towards White Wall. Yes, he is going to go White Wall, and from there, Boris does see one there, and he gets dropped. Wow, almost dropped there straight away. And Gamonic so is actually using an MSR thermal and he gets dropped by Palooka there. Interesting using the MSR thermal. Uh, you don't see that very much. You see snipers in the red. You see thermal snipers even less. Yeah, the question he's got to be asking himself though is why is he there? A very, very random place for a thermal sniper to be. Normally you'd expect him to go top red, pre-aim that B-bomb, see if he can get an, an early kill, or, and then maybe at least change weapon, but he seemed content on going on that left-hand side, but then to actually rush up and be aggressive on bottom A building, not entirely sure what was going through his mind, but we're on board with Apology. It's actually Apology and Yan in a two versus four scenario. Bomb is down, one minute 19 to go, and Apology is being very, very defensive, continuously checking his back, and it looks like Yan just had a few shots fired at him from mid-map, so Apology is going to need to give him a little bit more support. Apology is there, he's with his teammates, but he gets dropped. He's now one versus four for Apology. None of this team have made a kill yet, so Apology's got some serious work to do, and he's in a lot of trouble. He has 58 seconds to try and get all these players down or plant that bomb. Yeah, I'd be very surprised if Apology can pull off this 1v4 now. Time is ticking down. He has got the bomb, though, but if I'm Apology, I'll be thinking, right, let's just try and get a few kills on the board. But unfortunately, Palooka is top A. He takes down Apology and Payne. No one dying on their team, looking so, so dominant. They're going to go ahead and take this first round of SD on C-Town. Luca going 3-0, really having a strong start to the game. Yeah, they are having an incredible start to the game. When we did predict this, the pain would be the dominant force in Search and Destroy. Palooka 3 for O as we stay on board with Blooded Clouds for their defence. As We will be doing a two-round switchover, so we'll watch one of each side of these teams before we switch. Here we go, on board with Known Boris as he looks like he's playing aggressive. Straight through the bottom, see if he can pick anyone off. He's not stopping, he's going all the way. It looks like he's going to try and flank here. I'm pretty amazed he's managed to get all the way into pain spawn without a pain player. See, Tojo does take down Zay's quite early on. That looked like that was in the mid-market area. And Legendary takes down Apology and Boris being very cautious, even throwing that second stun. That was a little bit unnecessary, if I'm honest. That Semtex was always going to kill Boris. Uh, it was always going to kill Legendary, rather. Not entirely sure why he did that, but that's a nice shot cross map with the PP on Tojo. Looks like he's just going to try and patrol this. He has made it two versus two. It's Yan and Boris up against Paluka and Style. Paluka still to die, though. And Yan does take style down. This is going to be a one versus two. And I think I'm going to go ahead and change team and get on board with Paluka. 
Yeah, let's change team and get on board with Paluka. And you know what? That paid off for Boris right there. He took the risk. He won all the way across the map and picked up two nice kills, which has given his team the advantage now. And Paluka looks like he's got to go get that bomb. He is in their spawn at the moment, and I'm sure one of the players is around here somewhere just before we switched over. Yeah, Paluka knows Boris is somewhere around here. And he has, in fact, just seen him. That was really nice play by Paluka. Just saw his gun peek out around the corner and got a very, very simple kill. But now it's going to be Paluka versus Jan. The problem Paluka has, though, is Jan is going to know where he is. And he may, in fact, know Bomb is down as well. So Paluka, quite a bit of work to do now. One minute four needs to try and get his hands on that bomb and decide which bomb he's going to try and find at. Yeah, he does, not he? He is playing it very, very cautious. I mean, he does have still have a little time left. 55 seconds isn't a small amount of time and he is playing it incredibly cautious. End up going across the entire other side of the map before he goes to get this bomb. Is he looking for the kill? I think he's dedicated his mind to trying to get the kill. Not entirely sure why. This is a very, very risky strategy. He's left the bomb on the other side of the map. But he, oh, this strategy has in fact paid off for me. If Paluka does not get this kill, if he gets turned on, I swear I will quit playing COD. This is absolutely ridiculous. Where has he gone? This is the problem. Oh, no. has now he's actually lost the player. Where is he? There he is. Oh, so lucky to find him again then. If Goblin Yan had gone up top, he could have been in serious trouble, especially as he was turning around there. <laughs> So, so close for Paluka there. That almost fell completely when he ducked behind them pillars and lost sight of him. But you know what? Paid off for him in the end. No, you're right. It did pay off for him in the end, but that is far, far too risky. I would not risk doing that, especially not in a winner's bracket semi-final. That's way, way, way too risky for me. But we will go ahead and change team. Get on board with Buddy Clouds. They're now losing 2-0, so they really need to try and get a round on the board. On board with Boris. He's got bomb. He's on this left-hand side using his ACR with him back. Yeah, as we are on board with Bloody Clouds, we are looking at Known Boris. Gets taken down by Paluka. And just amazing from there. Demonic Zayd is up the top right now. He's he's looking for someone by the look of it. He's looking for someone by that thing and he keeps looking. He must have uh, come into contact with someone or seen a stun from that area as he's determined that there is someone here. Payne Tordra actually getting two pieces on the other side of the map, leaving Zayd on a one versus four. And oh, now he gets taken down. What? No idea what just happened there. Zay's turned the corner, he knew exactly where Style was, he, he had the first shot on him, I think. Yeah, he did, and he just gets dropped by Style. <laughs> Not entirely sure how Style's gone ahead and done that, but that was fantastic play from him. But Payne, 3-0 up in this S&D, and they're just carrying on with what I said at the start of this game. They're so very dominant in S&D that I just can't see them losing. Yeah, they are so very dominant as we are back on board with them. And let's not watch Known yeah, Boris, let's watch someone else. Let's watch anyone with an SMG. No, it's actually 4AR. But uh, let's have a look at Gremlin Apology right now as he seems to try to be pre-aiming this top here. If someone has already gone down, Payne has taken a player. Yeah, Apology being very, very defensive. And this is the problem that they've got, uh, Bloody Cloud. They're being a little too defensive for my liking. And once again, we're seeing a one versus three scenario. And oh, Apology has actually taken down Paluka and Boris has just left the game. So Boris is just showing no faith in his teammate right there that he's going to go ahead and clutch this. Bomb has gone down at A. And ooh, you see Taz jump up. There we go. That was an easy 4-0 for a uh, pain right there. If you look there, Gamonic Zay 0 for 4. Gremlin Apology 1 for 4. The rest of them have lost. They didn't do very well either. I mean, Pain Paluka 6 for 1. Pain Stylex. 5 for 1, Tordor 4 for 2, Legendary the only player on his team, just goes neutral, but oh my god, they absolutely decimated on the search and destroy. Yeah, they really did. Got to say, they're not a fan of Bloody Clouds leaving the game when one of your teammates is in a clutch moment, doesn't show much faith, and immediately he's going to be thinking, oh, my teammates don't have any faith at all, but that is actually a best of five, so I'm not entirely sure why they decided to leave, unless they're trying to claim there's some sort of host advantage, not entirely sure, but have been invited back to the game.